Amen. We're so glad that you're here today. And now we're going to transition to our time of worship by giving back to the Lord. I'm going to ask if you would have a seat for just a minute. We're going to ask the ushers to come down and prepare themselves. And we're going to worship God through giving back to God. And so if you would, just bow your hearts with me and let's just go to Him in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to say thank You for this moment. Thank You for this time. There's so much to be thankful for. There's so many things that we have that You've given us. You provide all good things, Lord. Every good and perfect gift comes from You. And today, Lord, we want to honor You now by giving back. And I just pray, Father, for those that are giving, that you would just continue to add your blessings on their life. I pray for that which is given, that you would multiply it and use it to do so many things to bring glory and honor to your name, to see souls saved, Father, to see people become disciples, and, and Father, just to see miracle after miracle of how you bless us because of who you are. Father, we just want to honor you today with what we have, and we give it to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. After, this, after the buckets have been passed, if you want to stand back up and worship, you feel free to do that.
What a perfect song for this perfect moment. We believe that our God hears our prayers. Can I get a witness? And we believe that our God has taken all the sin upon the world upon His shoulders. He was hung on a cross and that He died. That He died. Can I get a witness? They put Him in a grave. For three days He was in that grave. But on that third day, the stone rolled away. On that third day, Jesus walks out of the grave, and our Jesus is alive. That's right. Give Him praise. And because Jesus overcame the grave, because Jesus overcame our sin, because Jesus overcame death, we have life in Him. And we can experience that same power that overcomes those things in our life. And I'm so thankful today. I wish someone asked me, we, we, if you're our visitor this morning, this is the time where we pray, we seek the Father to do miracles after miracles. There's a gentleman this morning that shared with me that his grandson has a friend, 14 years old, that has cancer and they've given him some bad news. But I want you to know, and I know that you already know this, the doctors here on earth do not determine life or death. That, that remains in the very hands of my Jesus. Can I get a witness? And so I want us to pray on behalf of that young man named Jamie this morning. And I want you, if you would, if you've got an unspoken request, would you raise your hand if there's something in your life that you know God needs to intervene, there's a miracle that needs to happen. I want you to know that you be praying for those things right now. God knows your heart. God knows everything about you right now, right? And He knows what your needs are. And He's promised in His Word to meet your needs according to His riches. So let's just join our hearts together and, and, and let's go to the Holy One, the Great I Am, the One who can answer all of our questions. Father God, we just, we want to say thank You that You've manifested Your presence here this morning. That we sense Your presence so strongly. And I want to say thank You, Father, that You've not left us nor forsaken us. I want to say thank You, Father, that You hear our cry, our desperate, free, a, a desperate plea. Father, that you hold the tears that we shed, that, they're, that you count them, that you have them. That that's a prayer language in and of itself. And so, Father, Lord, we just gather at this time praying for those individuals, for those situations. that are beyond our control. We know, Father, that all things, you hold all things, that you have control, that you are sovereign. And so once again, Lord, we just humbly come before you and we say, God, you are God now. We need you to be God in this situation. For every hand that was raised just a few minutes ago, God, you know everything that's going on in their life. You know the details. Father God, you know the situation, the circumstances. You're acutely aware of everything. And we just pray that you would speak your life, your peace, your strength, your wisdom, your healing, your provision in each and every situation. Father, in the name of Christ, we humbly turn to you. And we speak with boldness and confidence, knowing, God, that your perfect will will be done. And that's what we ask for, Father, is for your perfect will to be done in those situations. Father, for this young man named Jamie. You know the situation. My heart breaks as a father. My heart breaks, Father, for this, for this young man. My heart breaks for his family. But yet, Lord, the testimony is true that he knows you and that he is prepared. Lord, you have prepared him for this. And so, Father, I pray that you would continue to speak peace in their family, that you continue to speak strength into their lives. But, Father, I also pray if it be your will that you would not allow this to be the final moment of his life, that you would enable him to overcome this that has come against him. Father, we come in agreement with you, and we just speak your life there. We speak your healing there. And we pray for your perfect will to be done in his life. And now, Lord, we turn to this moment where we're going to look into your word. We've sung praises to your name. We've lifted your name up, and Lord, you've moved. Now I pray that every eye would be opened to see you as we look into your word. 
to gain your hope. I pray that our eyes would be changed, that we might see our world the way you see it, that, that you would give us that direction and purpose. God, I pray that our ears would be open to hear you, that we might have that intimacy of knowing that you know our name and you're calling our name and we can communicate with you. Father, I pray for our hearts that we would receive your truths, your principles, your way of life, that we would feel you, that we would know and be known by you and that our lives would be totally surrendered to you, transformed by the power of your word. We pray it even now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Would you give God one more round of applause? Yes. Amen. 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 God is good. Thank you. You may be seated. We're going to transition here right now for our kids. If you're here between the ages of three years old and fourth grade, we have some adults right now that are moving to the back, and we're going to let you go with them, and they're going to take you next door to our building to teach you the lesson that they prepared for you. And if you're an adult that's staying here, if you would, on the back of your bulletin, go ahead and get your bulletin out, and and, uh, we'll get ready. I'm going to grab my chart here. That was a lot of kids this morning. Did you notice that? That does my heart good to see all the kids that were here this morning. And it does my heart good to see you. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're looking good this morning. That's right. You guys are looking good this morning. And, and I'm so glad that you're here. And, and um, Hang on. Can you help me out here? I've, I've gotten tangled up. Will you unhook that right there? Uh, my wife dresses me in the morning. Did you get me? All right. Yeah, I'm free. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's it's pretty obvious my wife dresses me in the morning. But um, anyway, we want to say welcome. Thank you for being here this morning. We welcome you in the name of Christ. And we are New Heights Church. I'm Pastor Mark. And, and if this is your first time with us, we're so glad that you chose to be here today. I have um, a, a word for you this morning, and I want to get into it in just a second. But But um, we're we're in this series called I Have Decided, and uh, um, today we're talking about being thankful. And um, as I was preparing this sermon, um, I started really working specifically on it Monday, Tuesday, and and, and Wednesday-ish. And, you know, as the week went on, it was just really, really heavy for me. This was just one of those moments that was just, it was heavy because I know you. I'm your pastor, and I know a lot of what's going on in our people's lives right now, and, and you've given me that uh, the ability to know what's going on. You've talked with me. I've, I've heard your pain and suffering. I know some of the weight that some of you are carrying in your lives right now, some of the responsibilities, some of the difficult things that's going that you're going through. And, and as I'm preparing for this sermon, I'm thinking, Lord, how am I going to be able to stand up and give our people a message of hope and a message of of thankfulness without sounding hollow, without sounding shallow, without without carrying the depths that we need. You know what they're going through, Lord. How in the world am I going to stand up there and give them this message with everything that they're going through? And so God started working me through this process. And He started reminding me that, that His Word is His Word. Can I get a witness? No matter what your circumstance is, His Word is true. No matter what you're going through in your life, His Word is still true. Your circumstances, your emotions, your feelings, your negative experiences do not define or redefine the truths, the principles that God has for us. Can I get a witness to that? And so I want to stand here today and to declare to you and declare to me that being thankful really is a choice. It really is a choice. And so today I declare to you with my mouth what I believe God is speaking in my heart is that I'm going to choose to be thankful not just for today, but every day. Not just in this moment, but in every moment. We have the ability to be thankful in good times and bad. We have the ability, we have the choice to choose to be thankful when things are difficult or when things are going easy. Thanksgiving is not an easy holiday for a lot of people. 
Thanksgiving is very challenging for lots of people. It's in pain. It's hard to be thankful. When we're experiencing challenging times, it's hard to be grateful, especially if you're a young man who's recently lost their best baseball glove. It's hard to be thankful, especially if, if you're an individual and you've been to the doctor and the doctor's giving you the term cancer for your life. It's hard to be thankful. It's hard to be thankful when you're going through a chronic illness and it just doesn't seem to be getting any better. It's hard to be thankful when, when this is Thanksgiving and, you know, Christmas is just right around the corner and you've lost your job for whatever reason and you can't even find another job to apply for. Or you've applied to 14 jobs and you haven't heard back from any of them yet. It's hard to be thankful when things don't look like they're going to change. It's hard to be thankful when your dreams collapse. It's hard to be thankful when you've lost a dream or when you've lost a loved one. It's hard to be thankful. But we always need to revert to this very truth that the Bible is. That the Word of God still stands. And I want you to memorize this verse today. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It's right there on your outline. If you've got your Bible, go ahead and turn to it because I'm gonna, this is what I'm focusing. Everything is coming from this particular verse today. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 18. Here's what it says. Give thanks in all circumstances, for that is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You know, I want you to hear this, this last part of that verse. The last part of this verse says, this is God's will for you, number one, in Christ Jesus. You see, all of these things that I'm going to speak to you today, and truthfully, all of the promises of God are only found where? In Christ Jesus. So you need to underline that. You need to circle that or emphasize that in some practical way because you, we need to be reminded that it, it's only in Christ. It's only in Christ. None of the promises of God are found outside of Christ. None of the blessings of God are found outside of Christ. Everything that we need, every blessing, every promise, everything that God has given to us are only in Christ Jesus. And so this is, this is very important. And then the other thing is you go back. Look, this is God's will for you. What? That we're thankful. God desires for us to be a thankful people. Parents, let me ask you something. On Christmas Day, when the presents are all wrapped and, and the kids haven't gotten down yet, and you feel hope and excitement too, don't you? Because you're hoping and you're excited that when the kids see what you, what, what, what's down there, they're going to be thankful. But what happens on that last present when they open it up and they go, is there any more? You're not real happy, are you? You want to get up and kick them right out of the house, you know? Listen, that comes from God. God says, listen, it's my desire that you appreciate what I give you. It's my desire that you appreciate your blessings from me. That you're thankful. That you recognize that all good things come from me. God wants us to be thankful. But now listen, this is something I really, really, really want you to see today because I didn't see this. I missed it, but when, I'm, when I caught it, it changed the whole message. You ready? Circle the word in. The third word. Give thanks in. Circle that. And be glad that it doesn't say for. It doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances. What a word. And it transforms everything. God says give thanks in all circumstances. He doesn't say you have to be happy with everything or grateful with everything. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of bad in your life right now. There's a lot of bad in this world. There's a lot of evil in this world. And we're not happy about that. We're not grateful for that. We're not thankful for that. But in the midst of those moments, we can be thankful. In the midst of those circumstances, we can choose to be thankful, not for them. I'm not for sin. I'm not glad sin is in my life or that the impact of sin affects me and everybody else. Or, you know, that would be idiotic to, to, to even go there. But, you know, listen, I can be thankful in those moments. I'm not thankful for the times when people suffer. I'm not thankful for people who hear the word they've got leukemia. I'm not grateful when a woman gets raped or a child gets molested. No, 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 no. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying at all. You see, that's crazy. No one would be 
that way. I don't want injustice in my world. The Bible says, look, there's some things that you can be upset with. It's okay to be angry. Your, your anger doesn't need to stem from fear. But when you love someone, if you mess with my kid, I'm going to get angry. God says, when you mess with my kid, I'm going to get angry. Why? Because I love my kids. I love them. And, and, and I want to protect them. And I want what's good for them. Listen, it's understand, anger is, is a part of love when it's in the right way. So the Bible doesn't say be thankful for everything. It says recognize that they're evil and there's harm and there's hurt and there's sin and there's suffering. Recognize that. But don't be thankful for that, but be thankful when you're in that moment of what God is doing in that moment. Because here's the reality. No matter how bad your life is, there's something good. And it's just choosing to see God in the midst of your desperation. And when you see God in the midst of your desperation, there's good. All good things come from God. There's God. And when I see God in the midst of my worst moment, I can be thankful that God's in my worst moment. And even in my best moment, guess what? There are things I need to work on, right? There's things I need to look for. So the opposite of that would be just as true. No matter how good things are, I've got to work on something. The opposite is just as true. No matter how bad things are, there's something there that I can focus on to give me hope. There's something there that I can focus on to be grateful for. And so well, how do I do this? How do I be grateful when I don't feel like being grateful? How do I be thankful when things are going horribly wrong? Am I speaking to anybody yet this morning? Well, that's good. I'm glad I'm speaking to me anyway. I'll say that. Here we go. Ready number one. Write this down. I can always be thankful for God's grace. I can always be thankful for God's grace. You see, grace is so big, it's so powerful, it's so awesome, we don't even begin to understand or fully develop what the meaning or the, the purpose of grace really is. I can be thankful for grace, the grace that God shows me, that God gives me in my life. So what is grace? Grace is when God gives me what I need, not what I deserve. Grace is when God gives me what I don't deserve. Really, that's what grace is. It's that unmerited favor, right? Everything in your life, every good thing is a gift from God. That breath that you just breathe, that's God's gift. That heartbeat, that, 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 that's God's gift. You didn't pay for it. You didn't earn it. You don't own it. That's God's grace. That's His gift to you, to me. And the Bible says that everything, you've heard me say this, and I'm going to keep reminding us, Every good and perfect gift comes from Him, comes from God, even your home, your mind. No matter how good or bad you think your mind is, if God gave it to you. Your, your vision, can you see? Some of you need glasses. I'm to the point where I, that's God. Your ears, if you can hear me right now, raise your hand. Come on, everybody. Test. Guess what? God gave you your hearing. That, that, the mouth that you use to sing songs, that voice, that came from God. It's God's grace in your life. And we overlook it. We take it for granted. We just assume because it's always been there that it's always going to be there. And what we don't realize are these are the very blessings that God has given us by His grace. By His grace. Even your own life. Even your own life is by God's grace. Let me remind you, Ephesians 2, chapter 8. Chapter 2, verse 8. It says, For you've been saved by what? Grace through faith. It's a grace thing. Even your salvation is a grace thing. You've been saved by grace through faith. Why? It, and, and, and get this, get this, this. It's not of yourselves. It is a gift from God. It's God's gift. It's God's gift. Not from works so that no one can boast. It is a gift thing. You can't earn heaven. You can't pay for heaven. You can't buy heaven. You can't obtain heaven in and of yourself. You can't bargain your way into heaven. God says if you want to get to heaven, you've got to understand it is just a flat-out gift. It's my gift to you. It wasn't free. It cost my son his life. But it's free for you to receive. I'm giving you this. All you need to do is believe. And my son Jesus. All you need to do is receive my son Jesus. On that day when he was on the cross, he said these wonderful, wonderful words. It is finished. It means it's done. It's paid for. I've covered the cost. All you need to do is believe. All you need to do is receive this gift. Write this verse down, Psalm 103. In Psalm 103, David is talking about the very gifts of God. 
I want you to go back later and I want you to study this and, and, and just receive this. These are the things that we can be thankful for. In 103 it says, I will not forget the glorious things that God does for me. In other words, His gracious gifts. Things that I take for granted. He forgives all of my sin. Now that's a grace thing. Can I get a witness? He heals me. Now that's a grace thing. He ransoms me from hell. That's a grace thing. He surrounds me with His love. He fills me with life, with all good things by His grace. He is merciful. He is tender toward those who don't deserve it. That's me. Can I get a testimony of that, huh? He's slow to anger. And He never bears a grudge. My God never holds a grudge. I hold grudges. You, you break my trust and you don't get it back. You've got to earn it back. God doesn't hold a grudge. It's a grace thing. He has, not, he has not punished us the way that we deserve for our sin. If I got what I deserved in my life, I wouldn't be here right now. It's a grace thing. My rebellion against God, my trying to be God, my trying to control or manipulate or play God. But you see, the grace of God has rescued me from that. It's rescued from me, me from that. Every second of my life is a blessing. This second that I get to live right now. It's a blessing. It's a grace moment from God. Number two, write this down. I can always be thankful for God's plans. I can always be thankful for God's plans. In the midst of those moments where everything is going wrong, my God is sovereign. My God is in control even when I'm not in control. My, God is, my, my God's will can be done even when my will isn't being done. God has plans for my life. God has plans for your life, and they are good plans. Can I get a witness, church? Now, it's obvious. It's obvious that life is not always good. It's obvious that life is not always easy. There are things that happen that are painful, bad things, bad moments, bad circumstances. Life is tough. It's not a bunch of sunshine and rainbows. I get that. I'm not trying to paint the wrong picture here. But I want you to understand that even when life is bad, my God is still good. Even when life is hard, my God is still there on the throne. He is still God. He is still sovereign. And I know that not everything happens that happens in your life is good. And it doesn't always feel good. But let me just say this. Everything that happens in your life, you can't blame, blame God for it. Because a lot of the times, things that go awry, they go awry because we're not following God. They go wrong because we're not being obedient. And we want to blame God after that's happened. We want to point our fingers at God and say, God, this was your fault. God, you didn't do this or you didn't do that. Here's the reality. Why do we want to blame God for our mistakes? Let's own up to our mistakes. Let's own our decisions. Let's own what's going on in our life that, that we caused, that we put ourselves in that position. Let's own that and repent from that and turn back to God for that because here's the reality. God has a plan for your life. It doesn't mean that you're in that plan. You've got to choose to be in that plan. You've got to choose to obey that plan. And even when you are obeying that plan, there is a real enemy out there that's trying to defeat you. Can I get a witness? So therefore, we don't blame God. We trust God. We know that God has a plan. Jesus, or, or, or the word it says, there, are a way, there is a way that seems right to man, but the ends are death. We've got to choose the right path. There is one path. Jeremiah says, for I know the plans that I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration, his promise to us. Plans for your welfare, not disaster, to give you a future and a hope. We live in a generation that has no hope. We live in a generation that's in a dark world. It's in a dark place. It's in a lonely, discouraging place. And God says, if you will just function within the way that I want you to function in my realm of doing life, you will experience hope. You will experience a future. Some people believe that we worship a God who creates or causes all the sufferings. I want you to hear this today. I worship a God who took my suffering. Isaiah 53, Isaiah 56 Here's what it says. He was bruised for our transgressions. He was wounded for my iniquities. He, the chastisement for my sin was laid 
on him. I don't have a God who causes these things. I have a God who's willing to bear mine so that I can walk in him. Yeah. That's good preaching, Pastor. You keep it up. We don't have a calloused God. We don't serve a... We have a God who's willing to suffer with us, who's willing to come down and, and, and walk, walk, walk the walk with us, who's willing to carry us through these difficult times. We have a God who's willing to die in our place so that we might live with Him eternally. What a blessing. What a, what a, what a blessing. So God is so good to us and for us and through us. Hmm. God's got a plan for your life. You've heard me say this so many times. You've heard us declare this. We we miss it so much. We miss it so much. We don't realize what God wants to do in us and through us. We miss the opportunity because oftentimes it's challenging. Oftentimes it's bigger than we are, and we can't get our mind around it, and we miss it because we don't step out in faith. But I want you to hear this. Turn to your neighbor and say, God has a plan for your life. Turn to the neighbor, the other person, sitting beside you, and say, "You'll never experience joy until you walk in that plan." If you want to experience joy, if you want to be thankful, find yourself walking in the very plans that God has for you, and you can be grateful for that. Listen, I know, even in my darkest moment, get this, get this. You know, you know, I'm going to bring, you know, I'm going to bring this verse up. Romans eight. In my darkest moment, I can be thankful. Why? We know that in what? All things. Say all things. It doesn't say some things. It doesn't say part of the things or half of the things or three-fourths of the things. No, 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 no. It says all things. Turn to your neighbor and say all. All means all. All means all. We know in all things we work together for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to His purpose. Yeah, that's God. That's God's promise. It's God's word to you, to me. We know that even in those bad moments of life, that God can take those bad moments, those difficult, challenging moments, and use them for something good. Use them to be a blessing. Use them according to His purpose. So no matter what I go through in life, no matter, I can praise God because He's got a plan. I can trust God because He's got a plan. And He loves me enough that He willingly sent His Son to die in my place. So that I could discover that plan, walk in that plan, and experience that plan. Number three, you ready? I can always be thankful for God's presence. Oh, my goodness. We live in a lonely time. People are so, we're always around somebody, but we're never feeling, or like we're we're feeling alone. We had a pastor once say that, 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 that I'm never alone, but I'm often lonely. That's how a lot of us are. And we're, we're on our cell phones and we're, we're communicating with people, but we're not really communicating with people. We're, we're alone. And it's discouraging when we get alone. But God's promise is that He'll never leave me, that He'll never forsake me. That I, and I want you to think about this for a moment. I want to get into that in just a minute. God's promise is He'll never leave you. Once you're His, He never leaves you, not for one second. One second of your life will never be spent away from God. Think about that. Now, a lot of us as parents, we use this for our children. I just remember, now you're, you're saved now, so you've got God with you. So wherever you go, you're taking God with you. And a lot of times, we don't want God going in those places. We don't want to take God with And so, you know, that brings a fear factor, so to speak. You know, it's not that it's a bad thing from a parent's perspective anyway, but the reality is nonetheless true that wherever we go, we're taking God with us. God's going with us because he never leaves us nor forsakes us. Look at Hebrews 13. I will never leave you. I will never abandon you. He never abandons us. What a wonderful promise. What a wonderful promise from God's word to you, to me, to all of us. Have you ever seen that, those drug commercials on TV where they tell you about how good this drug is? I mean, it's the perfect whatever. It's going to fix this. It's going to fix that. For like 10 or 15 seconds, I mean, it's just like... Man, it's just taking its time. It's painting this perfect picture about what this drug is going to do for you. And then for the last 25 seconds of that commercial, it's... And the fast words are telling you all the things that this drug will do to you that are not good. You know what I mean? There's a catch, is my point. There's, there's a catch with it, right? This drug is so good to do this, 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 but this is what... You don't want to hear what it's going to, what it's going to do to you. And we don't want you to know what it's going to do to you because you won't buy it. 
Because there's a catch. With God, there's no catch. With God and this particular promise, the only catch is you need to be his son or daughter. If you are his son, if you are his daughter, if you have surrendered your life to him, his word is true, and his word to you is that he will never leave you nor forsake you. There is no fine print in God's word. Listen to this promise. Verse uh, Isaiah 43. Listen to this. Is it going to be on the board? Yes. All right. Listen, listen, listen. I want you to write your name on this. When Mark goes through, because there's some things in life Mark is going to go through. Mark is still alive, thank the Lord. You're still alive. And because you are still alive, there are there is life to be lived. And with that life, there are going to be some things that you are going to go through. So when Mark goes through the deep waters, God says, I will be with you. When Mark passes through the rivers of difficulty, God says, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned up. It will not consume you. I don't know what kind of waters you're walking through right now. I don't know what deep waters that you're going through. I don't know what fires that you're experiencing that feel like that they're going to consume you. I don't know what, but my hunch is in the, in the room that's this size with people that are this size, that, that there's somebody going through something. There's somebody experiencing some type of abandonment. There, there, there's somebody that, that, you know what, you're getting left for whatever reason. And I don't, it, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm not trying to be specific here. But you, on some level, feel abandoned. You, on some level, you, you feel alone. And maybe you've just gone through this where, that, you know, you, you just feel like, God, where are you? God, I, I've just walked through this. And, God, I, I'm all by myself. Where are you? And the reality is, I want you to hear this, God is walking with you the whole time. He's with you in this situation. He's experiencing it with you. And the answer is, I will never, ever leave you or forsake you. I am with you. I'm walking through this with you. So I don't know what you're worried about this Thanksgiving. I don't know what you're consumed by with fear, anxiety, doubt, whatever it may be. But the best way to handle that, whatever it is, is prayer. Right? Prayer. So, so, so read Philippians 4 with me. Don't be anxious or worried about what? Anything. Instead of worrying, instead of being anxious, instead of being consumed, instead of experiencing all those things, it says pray about everything. And then it gives you these hints on what you can pray for. Always making your what? Requests your needs known with what kind of an attitude? Thanksgiving. You can be thankful because God's with you. You can be thankful because you're not alone. You can be thankful because no matter what happens in your life right now, the grace of God is with you. The plan of God is ahead of you. And God is not leaving you nor forsaking you. And He's going to direct you through your life no matter where it is. That you are. Can I get a witness, church? Number four. Yeah. Can you see why I was so excited to be here this morning? I got this message and I was like, I can't wait to preach this. Number four, I can always be thankful that God is changing me. Now, if you know me, you know this is my heart because I get to experience this every day. You know I tell you that I experience being changed every day, being transformed every day. I can be changed by God. I am so grateful that God is not finished with me yet, that God is still working in me, that no matter what it is I'm going through, God is using that to make me better. It's, it's a part of Romans 8.28 that He's using that for the good to make me better. But listen to Romans chapter 5. It says that not only that, but we also rejoice. Another word for rejoice could be thanks, being thankful, right? Uh, we also are thankful. That in our afflictions, turn to your neighbor and say afflictions. Because no, we know that our afflictions produce endurance. You see those things that you're going through, God is using to create something in you called endurance. It's like a long distance runner. In order for you to complete this race, you've got to be able to endure. And God wants you to be strong and be healthy and to endure. Why? Because endurance produces what? Character. And a proven character produces hope. Now, why is character so important? Well, number one, it gives you hope. 
Number two, and, and, and hope only comes from Christ, right? But number two, what are you going to take to heaven? Are you going to take your car to heaven? Some of you would like to. Are you going to take your house to heaven? No. Are you going to take your job to heaven? No. How about your savings? Nope. How, 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 are you going to take your clothes to heaven? No. Are we going to take this building to heaven? No. The only thing we're getting to heaven is our character. Think about that. That's why it's so important. God wants us to be joyful because He is producing something in me that lasts eternally. Something in me that reflects Him. My hobbies, they're not going to heaven, but my character is going to heaven. My relationships may or may not get to heaven, but my character will get to heaven. All the things that I try to stockpile here on this earth, they're probably not going to make it to heaven. But the one thing that God is working inside of me is my character because He wants me to be like Him. That will get to heaven. Look at Philippians chapter 2. It says, God is working where? God is working where? God is, none of you believe this yet. God is working where? In you. Is that not up on the board? No, I didn't put it up. Okay. My bad. Sorry about that. Philippians 2. Write this down and go research it, all right? It says, God is who is working in you, enabling you both to desire to work out His good purpose. Then 2 Corinthians says, as the Spirit of the Lord works within us, we become more and more like Him. It's God working in us. I can be grateful that God wants to work in me, longs to work in me. True confession, I'm not all that I should be. You know that. But I'm not who I used to be. True confession, I'm not all that I should be. I'm better today than I was yesterday, and I'm going to be better tomorrow than I am today. Not because of me, but because of God in me. Come on, somebody. That's right. That's right. And the hope can be for you. That hope can be for you. That hope can be for us. Is we don't know who we're going to be tomorrow, but God does. He's already there, and He's making a way for us. The fifth one. You ready? I can be thankful for my heavenly home. I'm talking about heaven, not here on earth. I'm talking about something that's eternal. That no matter what I go through here, the pain, the suffering, the, all those different negative experiences, that there's going to be a day when I no longer experience that pain. There's going to be a day when I no longer experience those sufferings. There's, there's going to be a day when I, I don't have that ultimate despair in my life. I'm, I'm so grateful that there's going to be an end to this messed up story. That God is going to return and He's going to settle the score. That He's going to balance the books. That He's going to even the odds. And He's going to do all of those things. I can be grateful. That God is going to bring justice where there's injustice. John chapter 14, I've used this verse many, many times in, uh, uh, in funerals. But I want you to think about how it works for us today. Jesus said this, I am going there. That's heaven. I'm going to prepare a place for whom? Yeah, write your name there. That's hope. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, the promise is I'm going to come and get you. I'm going to come and bring you home. I'm going to come and bring you to this place so that we can be together. What an incredible promise. To prepare a place for you. You know what? You need to circle that in your Bibles. We need to be reminded of that daily. That whenever I'm going through a challenging, difficult, overwhelming time, that this time isn't it. That this isn't all that there's going to be. That there is more to be done. That God has got a place for me. And listen, he describes that. Listen, listen what the Bible says about that place. It says, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered the heart of man the wonderful things that God has prepared for those who love him. Wow. Listen, television tries to depict heaven, and I understand what they're doing as this perfect light place, right? It's all white. It's it's all white. But i got to tell you something. My God's about color. Just a couple of weeks ago, when you were here driving through the mountains, what were you amazed at? The color. My God is about beauty. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't take the holiness out of it. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. But, man, he is about color. He's about beautiful things. And when we get to heaven, there's going to be a lake up there that's got my name on it. There's going to be a golf course up there that's got my name on it. I'm going to get to experience some time up there when we get to heaven in these beautiful places, in these beautiful flowered, tree-filled places that he has designed specifically for you and me with no sin. 
No suffering. No hurt. No death. None of that at all. It's going to be a perfect place. It is a perfect place where we're reunited with our loved ones, where we're reunited with those that, that, that we've lost to illness, to those that we've lost to car wrecks, to those that we've lost to, to just whatever it may be. There will be no more death, no more pain, no more tears, no more sorrow. I have that hope. I have that hope in Christ Jesus. And let me ask you this. Does that mean everybody's going to get there? I need you to slow down for just a moment because the answer is no. I need you to hear me for just a moment because the answer is no. Jesus says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. There's a distinct path. There's one path that leads to this place that I'm talking about. There's a distinct path. There's one path that leads to these promises that I'm trying to share with you today. And so there's two reasons I want to share this. Number one, you need to check yourself. Do I know that I am saved? Do I know that I have surrendered my life to Christ? Do I know that if I were to die, God forbid, today, that when I die, I'm going to, I'm going to this place that Mark's talking about? You need to check yourself. Because if you can say yes, then you can celebrate that. But if you don't know, then before you leave this place, you need to know. Church, come on. And it's really simple to do that. You just surrender your life. You just say a prayer. A prayer is nothing more than you talking to the Father, you talking to God, and you simply say, God, I recognize that I am wrong, you're right, that I have what we call sin in our, my life, and you don't. And I, don't, I need this sin to be taken care of. I need this sin to be forgiven. Would you forgive me? Jesus, would you come and live with me? You simply pray that prayer. Words won't get it done, but your heart will. It's not the words you pray. It's the meaning of your heart. Do you really want to give your heart to Jesus? That's what saves you. And church, hear me, hear me, hear me. If you are saved, there's someone in your world that's not. There's someone in this world that needs what you have. There's someone in this world that needs the message that you've been given today, at least on some level, in some capacity. You may not give them the full message, you know what I'm saying? But you give them part of it. Because they need to know what you know. They need to have what you have. They need to experience what you've experienced because Jesus died for them just like He died for you. Everybody is not going to heaven. Jesus Himself said that, that even though you call upon My name, or you called on My name, depart from Me. Even though you did miracles in My name, Department from me. Even though you healed people in my name, depart from me because I did not know you. It's a sobering thought. It's a sobering process. But we need to stop for just a moment and look at ourselves and evaluate, am I going? Am I there? And if I am, who can I take with me? Who can I get to go with me? I can be grateful for this opportunity to be used by God to reach somebody else. Listen. Because I know I'm going to heaven. And I'm getting there by the grace of God. I can celebrate whatever it is I'm going through. I want to read this one last verse to you before I bring us to a close. 2 Corinthians 4. Is it up on the board, I hope? Yes. Because I, I know there's somebody here today that's feeling this very thing. We are pressured in every way. I know there's somebody here that's feeling pressure from all sides. Top, the bottom, the side, the front, behind, and both sides. But listen, we are perplexed, but not despair. Well, I feel the pressure, but I'm not crushed. I feel perplexed, but I'm not in despair. We are persecuted, but we're not abandoned. We are struck down, but we're not destroyed. If you don't have Jesus in your life, you can know that. But if you don't have Jesus in your life, you won't know that. To gain this promise, to gain this truth, it all is found in Christ Jesus. And I want you to stop. Maybe some of you need to surrender your life. Maybe some of you need to resurrender your life. Because you've forgotten what all it is that you need to be thankful for. And so we want to close right now in prayer. And I want you to ask God. I want you to, to, to check yourself. 
have you settled this issue? Have you? And, and if so, do you need to redesign some things? Do you need to redo some things? Do you need to recommit some things? Because no one's guaranteed tomorrow. No one's guaranteed next year. No one's guaranteed anything. But we have the promise of a forgiving God, a merciful God, a God that encourages us and strengthens us and enables us to be thankful. Lord, we humbly just pause right now because you've given us a lot of great stuff and encouraging stuff, life-changing stuff. But before we go any farther, Lord, we want to ask, are we where we need to be? Father, some of us need to step out in faith for the first time and surrender our life to Christ. Father, some of us, we've surrendered our life to Christ, but, but we've grown cold. We've grown away from you, and we need to repent from that. Some of us, Lord, are, are making decisions, and we've not consulted you we need to stop before we just make this decision and, and turn to you some of us Lord are you brought us to this faith challenge and, and you're calling us to do something that's challenging and we're scared but we need to step out in faith Father all of us need to see you so we can praise you so that we can be thankful for you. With every head bowed and every eye closed, is there someone here today that you know you need to make a decision for the Lord? You know that you need to be thankful for something. You know that, that, that God is asking you to do something that's challenging. Whatever that is, I'm trying, to, I'm trying not to be too general, but you know that God is calling you out to do something different in your life. Would you just raise your hand? I'm not going to embarrass you. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah. God bless you. Anyone else? I know God is calling me to do something, and, man, I don't know if I want to do it. I know that I'm supposed to be thankful, but my life is really not something to be thankful for right now. It's hard. Lord, you know the heart's.